Let's give everybody a big hand clap and appreciate what they've done. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. And I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk about this magnificent gift of righteousness. This magnificent gift of righteousness. One of the things I want us to understand is I try to, as much as possible, talk about the righteousness of God because it is one of those things that people still struggle with as far as receiving it and walking in it and understanding it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, he says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Some people say that you are righteous until you fail or until you fall, and that you can sin away this gift, that you can sin away or somehow get rid of this marvelous gift of righteousness that has been given to us. I want you to think about something. When we were all sinners, we did righteous deeds, righteous things we did. As a sinner, before I got born again, I did some goody-goody deeds, man. And we all did some pretty good deeds, and we were not even born again. We, we did good deeds, and we were still spiritually dead. But I was still a sinner. I was still spiritually dead. Doing the good deeds did not eradicate my spiritual deadness. And so we thought, well, I won't get born again, but I'll go to church at least twice a month. Well, I won't get born again, but, you know, I'll, I'll feed the poor. And you're still spiritually dead. And the thing I want you to think about is that while we were still sinners, I can't righteous deed away my my sinhood. In other words, my righteous deeds would not get rid of my status as a sinner. And we all know this. And somehow, when you begin to relate that to the gift of righteousness, we throw all of that out of the, out of the building. The fact that we have been made righteous and when we got born again and when we were made righteous, how many of you know you still sinned? Now, that's the first time I did that. With boldness, I said, you know you still sinned. You know, I, I try to ease it in there and say, you know when you were righteous, you know you still wasn't perfect or, or you, still, you still made some mistakes. I, I try to say it in other ways, and, and I'm asking the Lord to work with me so I can be straight down the line. But since you've been born again, you still sin. Maybe not as bad as before because now that you're saved and God's been working on you and certain things you don't do, do anymore, but you still 
operated in some level of sin. Somebody says, well, I can't receive that. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you perfect now? You're perfect in Christ Jesus, but you're not flawless as far as your humanity is concerned because you still act a little crazy every now and then. You still treat people a little bad every now and then. You're still rude to the waitress that comes. You still got some issues in your life, but those issues will not eradicate the gift of righteousness. See, look at y'all. You're, you're kind of scared right now because somehow religion has convinced you that now that you're born again, you're flawless, and you know that ain't true. You know the day you got born again, you might have cussed two, three people out that day. You try to forget that day, but you know that's not true. And then you hear the thing that says, you know, you're born again, as if to say you're born again, you're supposed to be flawless. It doesn't work like that. You got born again, and you got on a journey. And on that journey, you started eradicating some bad behaviors. You start getting rid of some lust. You start getting rid of some bad attitudes. And today on your journey, you're not what you used to be. You're not what you want to be. But the journey continues, and you did not lose the gift of righteousness. Let me stay on that a little bit because some of y'all still, well, I just don't know. But all you got to do is ask yourself, am I flawless? And the answer to that is no, you are not flawless. For you to put sin in categories, big sin, little sin, and then you look at yourself, no sin. <laughs> Bible doesn't talk about big sin, little sin. It's sin is sin. But somehow religion says to us that once you got born again, there are no more flaws. Now, now that you're born again, you're better than what you used to be. Now that you're born again, there's just certain things you're not interested in doing anymore because the Holy Spirit's been working on the inside of you. Now that you're born again, there are certain things you refrain from doing. You're like, no, I don't want to do that no more because I'm not that same person. No, I don't want to say that no more. I'm not that same person. No, I don't want to hear that anymore. I'm not that same person. Yeah, now that you're born again, you're like, wait a minute, I'm going to put some new boundaries up. There's a new season in my life, and that new season causes me to, ha I mean, I got to put some new boundaries up. I, there's certain things I don't want to do no more. There's certain places I don't want to go no, no more. There's certain, and with all of your effort to try to build those boundaries up to honor God as a Christian that's born again, somehow you still Maybe months go by, years go by, but on this journey, you still may fall. But does that mean you lost the magnificent gift of righteousness? You fell righteous. You got up righteous. You're going to die righteous. You're going to heaven righteous because this righteousness is not based on you. You are righteous in Him. Amen. Well, why are we righteous in God, God's eye? Why are we righteous in God's eye? Is it because we do right? Why are we righteous in God's eye? That's just as bad as the other I just explained. Do we, do we think we're righteous because we do right? No. We're not righteous in God's eye because we do right. So that's going to take care of all of the, you know, the plans you're making. Well, you know what? In order for me to be the righteousness of God, I got to do right. No, the doing right will come first, will come afterwards. But what you got to get a hold of is fir first is that I am not righteous because I do right. I am righteous because of Jesus. Take Jesus out the situation, and you can do right all day long, but you're just doing right spiritually dead. But now that you're born again, you are doing right in Jesus. Your righteousness is because of Jesus. I am righteous because of Jesus. I didn't become righteous. He made me righteous. The day I got born again, I have been made the righteousness of God. And so you keep focusing more on doing right instead of being who he says you are. And the day you believe you're righteous, then you're going to start doing right because your, your new identity will just not 
continue to put up with certain things you do, but you keep allowing your behavior to determine who you are, and you are who Jesus says you are. And Jesus says, now that you're born again, you are the righteousness of God, and the day you believe that, you're going to start doing right. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, our text. He says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus was made to be sin in our place. Now, we know lots of sin. He knew no sin, and he was made to be sin for us and Jesus knew no sin. Why would he do that? That we might be, watch this, made, just like he was made a sinner or made sin and had never sinned, we were made righteous without ever doing right. Wow. He was made sin and never sinned, so we could be made righteous Without, without knowing how to walk in that kind of righteousness. The issue's got to be greater than our doctrine. The issue has got to be about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not fussing about what that person said, and I agree with this and I agree with that. The real issue, at the end of the day, when you finish fussing and fighting and arguing, the real issue is, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? That's the real issue. Because what good does it do for you to be expert theologians and rightly dividing the word with perfection and you don't know Jesus for yourself? You don't know Jesus. You don't walk in love. You got, you got a hard time forgiving everybody for all that kind of stuff. You have no relationship with Jesus. This whole deal is based on our relationship with Jesus. We're here celebrating this morning because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, you might not be exactly what you want to be, but keep, keep that relationship with Jesus. Hang on with that relationship with Jesus. I mean, as crazy as you might be sometimes, bring the Lord up in that conversation. Lord, I know I don't deserve it, but I need you to help me right now. You have a relationship with Jesus. Now, surely a lot of times people immediately think, oh, he's just giving people a license to sin. Oh, he's just making, making sin out to be this little small matter. No, there are consequences for you sinning. You want to go and cheat on your wife? You get back home that night, she got a shotgun because she found out about it. There are consequences for sinning. Ain't nobody trying to make light of sin. I'm just trying to make Jesus greater than your sin. I'm trying to make righteousness greater than your sin. And besides, I'm tired of arguing and debating with people over theology. Well, you know, Reverend, you know, I got a problem with what you said about 2 Corinthians. Okay, dude, that is your prerogative. You have a right to do that. Now, let me ask you something. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? I know him. How well do you know him? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because at the end of the day, your expert theology without an intimate relationship with Jesus? Are you following what I'm saying? And we're moving into a time in 2024, you need to know you know him. No, you don't need to think you know him. You need to know you know him. I mean, it's crazy. You got to pray before you go to the grocery store because some demon-possessed person might be in the cereal aisle with a gun mad at somebody, and you, all, you, all you wanted was some butter. You got to know you know Jesus. You in your car, and you honestly pulled out. You didn't see the other car. You didn't do none on purpose, but they, they upset. They mad. They mad at themselves. They treat themselves bad. And all of a sudden, they want to take all their issues for the week out on you. You better know that you know Jesus. And we are here celebrating Jesus who showed up as a gift to give gifts unto men, and he gave us this magnificent gift of righteousness. 
Now look at Romans chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. Ooh, you talking about, you talking about. Ooh, there's not even a word for what we're getting ready to read. I mean, Jesus became sin, which means they treated Jesus like the world's worst sinner. Jesus was treated as the world's worst sinner. Went to hell for us who had never sinned so that heaven can treat us like the best righteousness ever. And somebody said, well, I don't believe in Jesus. There are going to be a lot of antichrist attitudes that arise up like you ain't never seen before. They're going to treat Jesus like he stole something. And you're going to have to know in whom you believe in. Will you be quickly talked out of Jesus? Not if you have a relationship with him. Because when you have a relationship with him, you will have a flashback at, at, at a time where you were deep in a ditch and you know nobody could have got you out that ditch but Jesus. And I'm telling you, you need to know that you know him. David is reflecting on this new covenant that was to come. And in verse, eight, verse 6, he says, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth, righteousness without works. Now, now, now look at this now. David is describing what this must look like. Go back to verse 6. He's describing what this must look like. The blessedness of a man unto whom God imputed. That word impute, it means to credit or to charge to your account to credit something to, to your account or to charge something to your account. And the Scripture says, under whom God imputeth or charges or credits righteousness to those of you who are born again without any works to qualify the righteousness. He's going to credit righteousness to your account just because you said, I believe, just because you made him the Lord of your life. The day you made Jesus the Lord of your life, heaven said, you're righteous. Before you could do any goody-goody thing, heaven said, you're righteous. You know, that's hard for church people to believe right now because we've been trained in religion. We've been trained. You've got to sweat like a sinner in order to be right with God. I don't know if I'm okay with God, so I got to do one, two, three, four, five things in order to do it. He says, but God will impute or charge or credit to your account righteousness without works. Look at the next verse. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Your iniquities are forgiven right now and whose sin from David's eyes are covered. Our sins are not covered, ladies and gentlemen. Our sins have been completely wiped away. Mm, you don't understand. The blood of animal sacrifices covered sin back in the day. But the blood of Jesus doesn't cover sin. It kicks sin out of its socket. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. See, they had to go in with different animal sacrifices and, 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 and offer the blood of the animal sacrifices just so their sins could be, could, could be covered one year. It would only be covered one year. And they have, to, they have to return every year because they could never get rid of sin. So every, they could just cover it for a year. Imagine how long it must have been if they just left the sacrifice and they just got their sins covered and they had an argument on the way home. God, dog, they got to hold that for the next 12 months. But you and I who are born again, we are not under the blood of animals. We are under the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus did, did not cover your sin. The blood of Jesus kicked your sin clean out of socket. Praise God. 
saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Verse 8, blessed, now this is heavy, is the man. Oh, boy. Here we go. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not. He will not charge. Gosh, somebody. Sin to the account of the righteous. Yeah, y'all, y'all can't, you can't, you can't handle that. You ain't ready. You, you still, you still religious. You still traveling. You still, you still struggling, trying to figure out in your mind. Well, how can that be? See, you, you're gonna have to receive this. This is something you've got to receive. You ain't gonna get no better until you receive what he's already uh, uh, given you. And, and, and this is a ma- that's why I call it the magnificent gift of righteousness. Who does this? Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute or charge sin to your account. Now, to some, they'll say, well, shoot, since he ain't going to charge it to my account, I might as well go out there and sin. But remember, there are consequences for sin. See, some folks try, they, they try to look for a loophole in living wicked. But when you got the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, convincing you that you are the righteousness of God, you want to release God's, God's program. You don't want to release death. You want to release life. That's how, I, that's how you can tell if you're really saved. Because if you're really saved, it, it ain't going to taste as good as it used to taste before you got saved. It ain't going to look as good as it used to look before you got saved. You, you're not going to be, you're not going to be looking and see all the hotels you can get, you know, like you did b- before you got saved. You're not interested anymore. No Something has happened on the inside of you. God has been working on your desire. He's been changing your want to. And you don't want to do what you used to want to do. Now you're only only interested in doing what he wants you to do. You want to please God. So this is not a loophole to sin so more. This is the, 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 the very essence of God's love for us who says, now that you are saved, I'm not going to charge to your account. Ooh, boy. Y'all, y'all all right? It's still, it's still, it's, it's still going to be a merry, merry Christmas. going to be a merry Christmas. It's, the devil's has got this thing all wrapped up in church, and you can't hardly, you can't get free because you won't accept your identity. And the day you accept your identity, the behavior will follow suit. But you're still working, sweating, trying to be right. Some people say, let me go, let me go to Christmas service this morning. Maybe God will do a little something special for me this week. (laughs) He's already done something special. He gave us Jesus, and he gave us this magnificent gift called righteousness. My God, I feel like running right now. My goodness. <laughs> I remember the Baptist church, won't he do it? <laughs> let, me, let me show you this scripture right quick. Hebrews chapter 9, 28 in the, in the NLT. Hebrew 9, 28 in the NLT. These scriptures are all in the New Testament. So if you're going to hang on to the thing we've gotten traditionally, then what are you going to do with these scriptures? Especially this one. So also Christ was offered. How many times was he offered? Once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. See, we have the idea that God is forgiving us progressively. You have the idea when you wake up this morning, if I sin today, then, oh, God, forgive me, then he'll forgive you as you sin. That just wouldn't be wise, because that means Jesus has to just stay on the cross right now. And we can go to Israel, he's still on the cross. He don't even have a second he can come down, because it's, it's sin going on every second. Whew. 
So what he did was, he says, I'm going to give you a one-time sacrifice that's going to cover you from the time you get born again until the time I see you. It was like an insurance policy that's been paid up. I got you. And while you're on the journey, I'm going to change you with my goodness. I'm going to be so good to you, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to turn you away from what you thought you used to like. So also Christ was offered once for all times as a sacrifice to what? To what? To what? Take away the sins of many people. He will come again. How many of you, how many believe Jesus is coming again? He will come again, not to deal with our sins. Stop. Stop all my life, they told me. Jesus was going to come. He, he The Santa Claus, you know, the, the Santa Claus Jesus. Better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. You know, I'm, I'm telling you why, Jesus. Yeah, he's coming to town. He, he sees you when you sleep. He knows when you awake. Here comes the fear. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. You better watch out. That's why most folks scared to, to die. They're scared to cross over. That should be a glorious time. Every time I look at certain scriptures, I, I'm amazed at how much I don't know. You move out this body, and you don't even know you died and until you know you died. You, you, you just you move over. You move out of the physical realm. You into the parent of the physical realm. You're in a spiritual realm, and everything in that realm seems just, seems just as real as everything in this realm except you can comprehend it and see it and hear it. I'm not coming again to deal with sin, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. The final salvation, which is the putting on of your glorified body. You finally get your clothes back. Adam and Eve lost your clothes in the Garden of Eden. Then that day, you finally going to get your clothes back. Hallelujah. The magnificent gift of righteousness. Wow. Jesus never sinned, and yet, why impute sin on a man who doesn't sin? We have a forever gift of non-imputation of faults or sin. It is a gift of no charging or crediting to your account sin. You got saved and some angel turned the sin meter off. Hard to believe. Because you're sitting there and I'm saying it's 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 time for it to stop being hard to believe. Amen. It is time for you to believe what he said. Most people, I mean, literally in verse 8, he never shall never impute sin to you. Some most people say, well, that's giving you license to sin. They're going to go crazy if you tell people that. 
Pastor Dobbs, you tell people that, they're going to go crazy. They're just going to go start doing everything. No, they don't know truth. That's why they go crazy. Believe the right things, then you can live the right way. If you believe the right things, you can live the right way. The reason why God won't impute your sins to you is because he's already imputed your sins on Jesus Christ. So that's number one. If he said that I have already charged Jesus and I have taken your sins and placed them on the body of Jesus, he will be allowed to turn around and charge you after he said that I have placed all of your sins on the body of Jesus. So he's not going to impute sin to you, but he had to charge sin to somebody. Somebody's got to pay for this sin, and so he said, and I'm going to put it on Jesus, and he will become the payment or the ransom from all of your sins. So the only way I don't impute sin to you, I got to find somebody who's going to pay the bill. So you see, if he turns around and imputes the sin on you, then Jesus wasn't enough to pay the bill. But since Jesus is enough to pay the bill, honey, every time the devil comes to try to condemn you, you need to send him to Jesus. Go talk to Jesus. Go talk to Jesus. I'm not going to be walking around condemned. Go talk to him. All of my sins have been placed on the body of Jesus Christ, so God will never, ever, never, will he ever, never impute sin to my account to turn the sin meter off because it's been paid for. Jesus has taken all of my sin. Now, either you believe it or you don't. I'm going to preach as hard as I can preach today, hoping you get it, and then I'm finna leave. I'm going to the Falcon game. Give me some popcorn. <laughs> oh, no, why? They ain't doing nothing but losing. Well, I was losing one time in my life, and you was losing that one time in your life. So, you know. I have finally figured that out. If you're not going to invest in yourself, why should I take your drama? Because you don't believe it. Everybody in here got to make their mind up that they're going to believe it. You got all kinds of folks. You got folks in here who believe it, folks who don't believe it, folks who sleep it, folks I just came to see my grandson's, uh, uh, my, 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 my grandmama's grandson. I, I, you got all kinds of folks here. At the end of the day, when all this stuff break up and everything you ever heard preached, I mean, they dogged Jesus out when he's on the Word. They called Jesus a wine bibber. They dogged him out. They had slander. They, they talked about Jesus and everything. And you, you, you got to be careful what you're looking at. Now, you got AI. AI now can take words and say words and put you and make a picture of you and all that. You got to be careful what you believe. And remember, if you want to see good days and live a long life, keep your mouth from lying and start speaking some truth. You, you got you to do it. Now, either you believe it or if you don't believe it. But I'm not going to do what I did the first 42 years of my ministry, and that's worrying about why you won't believe what I preach. I ain't, I'm just going to preach it, and I, listen, that's why I'm easy, ah, oh, <laughs> easy like Sunday morning, ah, oh, oh. Because I, I don't know when he might come back. I don't, he might come back. He might come back tonight. He might, might come back tomorrow morning. He, he might come back next week. I don't know when he's going to come back. I don't quite know how he's going to come back. I know there's some theologians who think they know, but I realize all the stuff I just don't know. But whenever he does and however he does, I want to be ready to meet the Lord in the air. I want to be ready. It's crazy down here. Folks have lost their mind down here. The weather even going crazy. The animals going crazy. Folks have lost. They don't, they don't know what to do. People don't know where they want to live or they want to die. They're just going crazy. Just, and listen, 2024 is going to be an increase of chaos. Just because there's chaos doesn't mean you have to be intimately involved in the chaos. You got to decide whether or not you want to be in the peace or you want to be in the chaos. I ain't got time for the chaos. I wants to be in the peace, praise God. 
I made my mind up. I'm going to mind my own, I'm going to mind my black owned business. You understand? Now, I ain't learned a lot, but I done learned that. I'm minding my black owned business. Look at that preacher with that coat on. Wonder how much that costs. None of your business. That's my black owned business. <laughs> I tell you, I declare your freedom right now. I declare you're free. You're free from worry. You're free from, from drama. You're free. David, in this passage in the book of Romans, he envied us because his sins were imputed to him. Every last one of his sins was, David was, he was punished, his sons rebelled against him, they died, the kingdom was split. That ain't us. We in Christ. Now, why, why, why talk about this on Christmas, man? You, be, you supposed to be talking about, you supposed to be talking about Mary and, and Jesus and, and Joseph. And I know Joseph was tripping out when Mary came talking about she was pregnant. He said, "Well, how you get pregnant? I know I ain't did nothing." And and uh, and and then Mary said it was the Spirit. Now that that wouldn't have worked this day and time. Mary would have been weeping. <laughs> now you know where that song came from, Oh Mary, don't you weep? <laughs> now, we, we, got, we got to talk about how to live. We got to, make, we got to make this stuff practical. It's got to be for everyday life. We ain't got time to be talking about no fables. Not to say that that was a fable, it's a true story, I have them, but we need, we need to talk about, you know, what, what, you, what you doing this Christmas? <laughs> when are you going to believe? Now, here, here's the statement that got me going down this path. All the blessings of God will flow in your life when you have righteousness. God declared over Abraham, you're righteous. And then the blessings of God just begin to flow in his life. And the thing about Israel, Israel had righteousness based on the blood of the bulls and the goats. But our righteousness is based on the eternal sacrifice of Jesus. Now the question is, when are you going to start believing this? How many more times are you going to go back and forward believing that you are the righteousness of God? The day you believe you're the righteousness of God, my warning to every person out there who does this, never send an evil spirit against a Christian who believes they're the righteousness of God. You done messed yourself up because you cannot curse what God has already blessed. You don't hear me. God, God saw Israel as righteous in the sacrifice, but so did the enemy. God saw Israel righteous. The devil saw Israel righteous. The problem is, Israel never saw themselves righteous. So they continued in sin. And if you don't see yourself righteous, you're going to continue in sin. 
You're going to continue just, you're going to continue in sin because you won't see yourself as righteous. You got too many voices going through your ear. You just, you just can't believe it because somehow you want to position yourself as if you contributed to what Jesus has gifted you with. You still trying to pay for what is free. You're still trying to do it. You're still working hard to try to be righteous with God but you're righteous by birth. So I said, wait a minute, Pastor, I thought all the Christmas services you preached for 30 minutes. That's when it's on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, not on Sunday. What's the matter with you? You keep looking at your wife. I'll be done in a minute. Ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> You're righteous by birth when you got born again. Righteous is a term which just simply means okayness. I'm okay. And we are 100% okay with God because of our new birth, not because of what we do. We're 100% okay with God because of our new birth, <clears throat> not because of what we do. You keep trying to make what you do the determining factor of who you are. As we get to as we get this issue of righteousness settled in our minds, that's what I'm trying to do. You got to settle this in your mind. Once you get righteousness settled in your mind, you'll stop chasing okayness. That's, that's what we do. We're chasing okayness. What else do I need to do to be okay with God? Chasing okayness. As soon as you get that in your head, as soon as you get settled in your head that I am okay with God because I'm righteous, then you can rest. This is what it means to hear the Spirit bear witness to our spirits that we are the sons and daughters of God, bear witness to our righteous identity. He convicts us of our righteousness so we are no longer hungry, hungry and thirsty for more. I am righteous. It's enough. And on that righteousness, everything in my life starts transforming and lining itself up with who I now believe I am. Your conversation going to change. Your, your desire is going to change. The stuff you thought you liked, you don't realize had a bad taste in it. You know, I used to love uh, those uh, donuts with the hot sign on it. I used to love them. Hot sign come on. I thought I heard God every time say, you need to go on in there. You need to go in there and handle some business, boy. You remember they had that sale, buy one, get one dozen free? And I eat a dozen on the way home. <laughs> Tap said, where you been? I said, I just went and rolled around. She said, you lying, you got sugar on your mustache. <laughs> and then when I, when I backed up off of it for, for some years, I said, Ken, you was with me. And in New York, we were shooting a, a, a New Year's special. We were in New York, man, and and, and passed a Krispy Kreme donut with the hot side on. I made the driver back up. I said, hold up. He said, what? I said, that's a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> you know, he's a Turkish guy. And he, he said, okay. I said, back it up. Man, Ken and I went in there. We got a couple of dozen, didn't we? Oh, it's a good day. The Lord is moving.
Man, we, we start eating them donuts. I start tasting stuff I never tasted before. Like, what happened? I'm ready to do my normal dozen. I think we stopped at about four, five or something. Because the hair starts swimming. And I'm, I'm tasting grease. I'm like, where the, sweet, where the sweetness? What is this, fried, what is this, the donuts, uh, the fried and fried chicken grease? I mean, what this? <laughs> Never tasted before. Got sick to my stomach. It was disgusting to me. I hadn't, I hadn't gone back since that day. Mm. That's what God is doing to you. Something that you used to do that you thought was sweet, that you thought tastes good, that you thought uh, was, was great, I dare you to step back in that right now. You're going to taste some, something you didn't, you didn't notice before. You, you, all of a sudden, you're going to be disgusted with it. All of a sudden, you ain't going to want to swallow it no more. All of a sudden, you don't want to go to 12 donuts. You're going to stop there at five. Trust the Holy Ghost. He knows what he's doing with you. You are not the first one that he has transformed. He is snatching the taste out of you. You who have been smoking weed like it's a gift from God instead of righteousness. God knows, and I'm talking to y'all Christian folks who got your medical identification out there. And you, you, you had your little something before you came here. I mean, it's, 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 it's Christmas Eve. I might as well go and do a little something, something. God knows how to change your taste. He knows how to snatch it out of your life. He knows how to snatch it out of your... And so instead of you waiting to see if he's going to snatch it out, you ought to start praising him because you know what's getting ready to come. You ought to start praising him. Y'all excuse me for hollering, but I know him. I know him. I don't know about him. I know him, praise the Lord. Honey, when you back up and you start having a flashback at what God has already done, you start looking at how you used to be and you look at how you are right now. You start looking at where you used to go and you don't ever want to go back that place no more. You start looking at how broke you used to be and now all of a sudden you're able to pay all your bills. You start looking at how selfish you used to be and now you're considering somebody besides yourself. I'm telling you, he's able. He convicts us of righteousness so we no longer hunger and thirst for more, whatever it is. I am the righteousness of God. When I'm up, I'm the righteousness of God. When I'm down, I'm the righteousness of God. But I don't know why I did that dumb thing, I'm the righteousness of God. When the devil whispering in my ear, look at you, you ain't changed no bit. Look at you, you, I'm still the righteousness of God. We see that we already have it all. What's done is done. We are okay. And we are okay forever. And we don't have to struggle for okayness. We've been made right with God. The magnificent gift of righteousness so that in the ages to come, if anybody would ever think in the future,
can God do this? He will point to you who have been changed by his grace. He said, look at them. These are the ones that I have called out of darkness into this marvelous light so they can show forth the praise to the Almighty God. Christmas celebration ain't nothing more than having some church and thanking and praising God that he gave us his son, Jesus, who then presented us with this magnificent gift of righteousness. You get anything out of that this morning? This magnificent gift of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you can hold your walk in, I mean, if you can just, if you can do that for me, I appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the birth of Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending us all of the most expensive thing that heaven could offer us. You gave us your son. Thank you. And we are determined to celebrate and the truth of this holiday that Jesus is the reason for this season. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Where would we be had, had you never been born? What? would we be but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so whosoever whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life Lord help us sometimes we just want to just weep in joy we just Oh my God, what would have happened? What should have happened? What could have happened? Thank you that we're, we're perfect in our stance and that our state is catching up with our stance. May this, Christ, may this Christmas be filled with anointing change of heart, a change of mind, a change of direction. May this Christmas be more than physical gifts that we can give, but a realization of who we are and what this is all about. And use, Lord, this time of celebration to prepare us for the year that is to come as we remind ourselves of the greatness of your glory. Jesus name Lord speak to us on what you'd have us to give let our giving not be separate from our worship let us come to a place where we understand that our giving is our worship really today We praise you for it all. We give unto the Lord glory due unto his name. We bring an offering and worship in the beauty of his holiness. Thank you for the opportunity to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
If you need an offering envelope, if you'll raise your hands and the ushers will be more than happy to get one to you. This is not bucket plunking. This is an opportunity to worship God, to give glory to his name, the scripture says, bringing an offering and worshiping him in the beauty of his holiness. Beauty of his holiness. We praise you, God. We give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give not under pressure. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give not out of the fear of a curse, but we give out of a cheerful heart. Thank you, Lord, for your power and your grace to make the difference in everything we do. Hold your offerings up, your phone, or however you're giving. Father, we, we declare over this seed today, over this offering today, we worship you because we give you the authority to speak into our lives and to move us and to show us and to lead us and to guide us in our giving. We praise you for it now in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Let's just go ahead and receive this offering this morning. As they're doing that really quickly, I want to thank the children's and the youth ministry for the hard work they did to present to us. I'm so grateful. All of our music ministry everybody for doing everything that makes the difference in the things that happen here at World Changes. We absolutely, certainly appreciate it and we appreciate you. Now, one more thing. If you can hang with me about five more minutes, I'm done. If you're here today and you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, remember what I said, good without God doesn't count. <laughs> Doing great deeds without being born again still just makes you a spiritually dead person that does great deeds. If you have never been saved, you've never been born again, be an awesome present for him today. Your life, giving him your life. Just think about this. If you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? In heaven or hell? The only way you spend eternity in hell is by rejecting Jesus. Don't reject him, not for another second, not another minute. Make him your Lord and your personal Savior today. If you've had a relationship with him and somehow that relationship has been interrupted and you never re-engaged in that relationship with Jesus, now it's time to do it today. Thirdly, if you don't have the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now it's the time to receive that right now. And last but not least, is God calling you to this church, World Changes Church International? Is he calling you here today? Is this the brook for you to feed from? It might not be, but if it is, get to the brook get to the place. He said to Elijah, go to a certain book and there will I sustain thee. Is this the certain brook? So, it's now time for you to respond. <clears throat> if you're not born again, you want to be born again, come to this altar right now. If you need to recommit yourself to the Lord, come now. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can come now. Join this church. You can come now in Jesus' name.
come to Jesus just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now. Just now. He will save you. He will save you just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now, just now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. He will save, he will save, he will save you just now, just now, he will save, he will save. Come on, one more time. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. Congregation, give those who've come down here a big hand clap for praise. We thank God for you, the decision you made. All is well. Father, I pray the blood of Jesus be upon their lives. You watch over them, take care of them, show them the path that they were created to take. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, if you will follow this gentleman here to the prayer room, they're going to take you and give you biblical understanding of how to attain and maintain what you came to receive. And we thank God that you'll never be the same again. <laughs> Amen. Congregation, would you please stand for our final blessing? I want to say Merry Christmas to all. And I pray that you will allow Jesus and the Spirit of God to be a part of all of your activities. Some of you just need to rest. <laughs> Amen. May the Spirit of grace be upon you through these holiday celebrations. I declare the blessings of God over your life. I declare that you will be protected, that the angels of God will carry out God's command to watch over you lest you dash your foot against the stone. I pray that you walk in favor, that doors will open for you that would have never opened. I pray that the Spirit of God will speak to you and release love upon you that will place you in a position to forgive without holding back. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Merry Christmas, everybody. The Christmas fun event created holiday cheer for numerous families this year. I think what we enjoyed the most about the Christmas fun event is just watching his personality, his interaction, and just listening to those that's hosting the event.
this beloved get-together, hosted annually by WCCI, presented a free but priceless opportunity for both children and adults to be merry and cherish community in a family-friendly environment. What I enjoy most about the Christmas fun event is the activities, coming together with fellow believers, just enjoying ourselves, singing, dancing, and celebrating Jesus. Of course, the build event. <laughs> the event included fun activities like a gingerbread house contest, train ride, face painting, hot cocoa bar, games, and much more. You know, I like to see family environments from many different fashions. And one thing here at Real Change is you definitely get, you know, a family vibe from multiple different coaches, multiple different people, and one family as a whole. We also became the hands and feet of Jesus with our annual Project Angel Tree Outreach. You all brought Christmas gifts for numerous children, and we can't thank you enough. Because of people like you, these children feel seen, treasured, and cared for. If you want to have a hand in making Christmas merry and bright for children in the community, or would like to get involved in our other initiatives, log on to our Global Missions page at missions.creflodollarministries.org today. We are world changers. Merry Christmas Eve, world changers. God has blessed us to see another Christmas, and in turn, let us lift up our voices to thank Jesus for his abundant love. So stay put to hear what's going on with World Changers. Men, does no one understand what you're going through? I get it. Are you having trouble finding the courage to be honest about your daily struggles? I get it. Well, a New Year's resolution and pure willpower can't fix this. Take advantage of this awesome opportunity and refuse to be a victim of procrastination and fear. On Saturday, January 20th at 11 o'clock a.m., take a step forward and upgrade your life by coming out to WCCI's first men's fellowship of the year. Text WCCI Fellowship to 51555 to register right now. Anyone who's been walking with the Lord will tell you that everything in their past has led them to where they are today. Well, world changers, as a church, we can say the same thing. We were destined for grace and we're ready to celebrate the 38 years that have led to today. So join us on Sunday, February 4th for our 38th church anniversary. And we want everyone to come on out ready for a good time. Now you don't wanna miss the special guests and presentations planned to mark this joyous occasion. Now, if you can't join us here at the World Dome, join us live online at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time for this once-in-a-lifetime event. Ladies, get involved in your community and put action behind your goals. On Saturday, January 13th at 11 o'clock a.m., discover accountability, encouragement, and friendship through the first Radical Women's Fellowship of the year. So don't fizzle out and refuse the burnout. Register for this exciting event by texting WCCI Fellowship to 51555 and become a doer, not just a dreamer. World Changers, check out this special announcement. Join us Sunday, December 31st at 7 p.m. in the World Dome for an evening filled with gratitude, praise, and anticipation. Engage in uplifting worship and share in heartfelt prayers. Hear an inspiring word from our pastors to set our course for the year ahead. Joining in the celebration is special music guest, gospel recording artist, Doe. Whether you're a member or visiting for the first time, we welcome you with open arms. Invite your family and friends to experience the warmth and fellowship of our church community. Join us as we bid farewell to 2023 and usher in 2024. Let's rejoice and give thanks for all that has been and eagerly embrace the opportunities that lie ahead. Doors open at 6 p.m. We look forward to celebrating this special evening with you. We believe every woman has the ability to flourish. At the 2024 Radical Women's Conference, we're celebrating growth, empowerment, and the pursuit of greatness. Join Taffy Dollar, Laura Pickett, Chris Lynn McNair, and Dr. Anita Phillips 
on March 14th and 15th for sessions to lead you into a season of fulfillment. Register now and take advantage of our early bird special. Text RADICAL to 51555 or visit taffydollar.org to save your spot. Calling all believers. Represent your coast at Creflo Dollar's 2024 Change Experience Tour. Whether you're on the East or West Coast, join Creflo Dollar in Los Angeles, California on February 2nd and in New York on April 26th for life-altering change. Show up and show out for your coast. Save your spot now. Text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or scan the QR code on your screen. So make sure to follow the information on your screen for more details. Remember to cherish your loved ones. Every person here is deeply loved by their creator, and we can honor him by recognizing this. Now we hope your week is restful and warm. So greet your neighbor, hey neighbor, as you leave today, and wish them a happy holiday. Merry Christmas, world changers. Let's say it together. Merry Christmas, world changers. You all have a great day. Oh my gosh, Merry Christmas! Hello. Merry Christmas Eve! Hi, you guys! Such a great service. Yes, it was so, so, so cute. It was so cute. Denisa, what did you get for service today? Um, I definitely got righteousness being that I am okay. Like, yeah. I, am, I don't have to work to be okay. And anytime the enemy wants to, like, knock something over my head and make me hold shame, I'm going to let him hold that because mm -hmm. God already handled it. Yeah. I'm not in the business of picking up what he already paid the price for, yes. the ultimate yes. price for, which we're celebrating. Yes. Um, but what did you get? I'm going to piggyback off of you. I was telling Denisa that Holy Spirit had dropped something in my spirit about when you go out to eat with some friends and a friend decides to pay for the bill. Yeah. You don't have to reach for your purse because the bill is already taken care of. And that's the same thing with the righteousness of God. Once he's already paid for it, yeah. I don't have to reach in my pocket or my wallet or my purse to figure out, let me find a good deed to do. Yeah. It's already covered. It's already taken care of. Just like he said, the bill of insurance, he equated it to so many different things. But it is already taken care of. And we do not have to worry about having to do, you know, what we need to do to be righteous. We're already right. I love that you say that because you know how crazy we look. How crazy do you yeah. look trying to pick up a tab that's already been paid yeah. for? Like he's already taking care of the bill, left the the restaurant, and you still sitting there like, well, let me do yeah. something. Go ahead and eat your food, partake in the blessing, and go about your yeah. business. I love that. I yeah. love that. But now we're getting ready to extend worship, which is our favorite part yes. of the service, which is giving. So right now I want to share Second Corinthians nine. Uh, we actually always talk about this, but God kind of laid it on my heart like what is your heart posture when giving mm -hmm. when we say God loves a cheerful giver what does that even realistically look like it looks like you saying God you got it I am you know honored to sow into your word to sow into this ground to sow into what you're doing here in the earth and partnering with you God I'm not gonna worry about what my bills say I'm not gonna worry about what my boss say I'm not gonna worry about what Christmas look like under the tree yeah. me being a cheerful giver looks like giving cheerfully without anxiousness mm -hmm. and that's what the Lord loves so 2nd Corinthians 9 verses 8 through 10 says and God will generously provide all you need not some of what you need okay the word is clear baby I'm quoting scripture okay. if he will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others as the scriptures say they share freely and give generously to the poor their good deeds will forever be remembered for God is the one who provides seeds to the farmer and then bread to eat in the same way he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. And what I love about that is God can't even supply generously mm -hmm. in me if I ain't got it. So he's going to provide it for you so that you can give. Yeah. Because he loves a generous That's giver. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Y'all already know it is so many ways to give. So make sure that you pick one that works best for you and you get your seed in the ground. Yes. Okay. So so the first way is by text, text World Changers, leave a space and your amount to 74483. You can call us at 866-477-7683. You can send it by mail at 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. Or you can give online at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. Yeah. So yes. get your seat in the ground. Yes. So right now we're getting 
getting ready to talk about something very exciting. Yes. To even think that we're getting ready to cross over into a new year is wild it's to crazy. me. 2024. Yeah. 2024. We want you here. We want you in the building. So yes. join us for New Year's service next Sunday, December 31st. And we're going to start at 7. But we need you to get here at like 6. You want to get a good seat. We don't want nobody arguing in the okay. parking lot. Just go ahead and get here early okay. so you get a good seat and you're ready. Um, we're going to kick the night off with a pre-service party. Like I said, it starts at 6.15 with DJ Coco. Mm -hmm. Don't miss special performances during service by singer and songwriter Doe. I think you all just saw that. Yes. Um, we also have the Dance Academy, L-Y-E Dance Academy, and then get ready to laugh with hilarious comedian <laughs> Matthew Hudson. We love him. We, we know do. Him. We he do. is hilarious. You're not going to want to miss yes. him. Yes. I'm so excited. So like this, Denise said, get here early. Okay. Yeah, for sure. For you sure. don't want to miss nothing. And then the word coming forth, we getting ready to set our 2024. Yeah. Y'all don't want to miss it. Yeah. I don't want to miss it. Okay. Off and bring in for the new year. Okay. Yeah. And you already know, we've been yes. talking about it for a long time. Women, we are getting ready to bloom. Yes. We are so excited. Get ready to bloom with the Radical Women's Conference 2024 happening March the 13th and the 14th. Um, join Pastor Taffy Dollar, Laura Pinkett, Chris Lynn McNair, Dr. Anita Phillips, Samara Joy, and so much more for two powerful days. All about confidently reaching the height of your potential. You do not want to miss this time of fellowship, worship, and fulfillment. Ladies, it is time to bloom. Text RADICAL to 51555 or visit taffydollar.org and save your spot today. Y'all, yeah. we so excited. It ain't even happy yet and I'm ready to bloom. Listen, okay? I call already me. put it in the group chat. Okay. Got my ticket. You got your ticket? I'm getting my ticket. It's a whole situation. Come on. Y'all need whole to Situation. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Be in the building. You yes. do not want to miss it. Yes, yes. So um, right now we've, you know, blessed you all. We love yes. you all. We want you to make sure that you tune into worldchanges.org. So if you feel like you missed any announcements, because there's always something going yes. on. Yes. But Merry Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve. We love you. Enjoy your Christmas with your family, with your friends. If you don't have family, if you don't have friends, we your friends. Yeah. Just, just play, play this family. family. Yes. Yes. Play it tomorrow. Yes. yes. Spend it with us. Yes. yes. We love you guys so much and enjoy this Christmas holiday. And we will see you soon. Bye. Bye. Change the world. Change the world.